another, the biggest issue, or another big issue in this ceiling is that darn can light. I call them can lights, but. Now, even if you buy one like this one, I believe is rated for insulation. It's written, it's always written in there someplace. Yeah, I, type IC. Insulation can contact this. But like I said earlier, fiberglass is just a filter. So packing fiberglass around this isn't really going to seal this, not going to make a good air barrier. Plus, it is, even though this can have insulation contact with it, a lot of people are accustomed to not keeping it that close. I've been in a lot of attics where I just go up in the attic and I can see every one of these can lights just as plain as day. And I can actually get up close to it and see down into the room through that little gap. And it's been like that for years. And all this, and then I look at the plywood and there's mold on their plywood. Why is there mold on a the plywood? Warm air came through these holes and reached its dew point. Ceiling fans and these um, can lights are the same thing. What I do, since I'm, I'm mainly in the drywall business, right? I have lots of scrap pieces of drywall. <clears throat> so what I do in my spare time, if I know I've got a job coming up, I'll save all the scrap and I'll make these boxes out of scrap drywall. I know that I want a little bit of clearance around there, so I made this 14 inches wide so it'll fit between the floor, ceiling joists, which is a 14 and a half inch space. And I made it high enough to clear the top of the box, the um, light. And I'm, I like to make it out of drywall because when I'm up in that attic or on the ladder, I've got to cut around things. And if this was plywood, I'd have to actually get a saw, a, you know, a power saw. I'm going to cut it with, a, um, with my drywall saw because we want to seal this later on once the drywall is hung we want to be able to seal this box to the drywall just like those outlet boxes we were going to ice, totally isolate this ceiling light now what is an easier way to do this talk the customer out of putting these lights in they're very popular aren't they I mean, it's not unusual to have a hundred of them in a house. I, probably, I try not to have any in my new house, and I still have probably 30. Because they're just, they're nice. But they are air leaks, so you want to make sure you treat them. So what I'm doing here, I actually have to cut the drywall a little bit around each one of these legs on this light. I'm going to have to cut out about an inch. So sometimes I'm actually up in the attic doing this work. So that's why I like to use the drywall because I don't need any power tools. I just can notch it out right there. This can be done prior to hanging the drywall like I'm doing now. Or if the drywall is already hung, you can crawl up an attic and do it later. Particularly the ones that are close to the eaves, you got to try and do first. And then they're just going to seal all around all these edges to really make this a nice airtight box. And then the insulation will just go up and around this, around this whole box. And you're not going to lose all that moist air in the attic. You're not going to have a, a big spot of um, mold on your plywood right above these lights. <clears throat> and you're going to save energy. So OK, so we've sealed everything up. We've got our uh, proper vent installed to stop wind washing. Um, I think we're probably ready for drywall on that ceiling. Well, except we didn't insulate it. We got to put the fiberglass in. Uh, a really good way to insulate is uh, with um, cellulose, too. That fills in 
all the little gaps. I've been in a lot of attics where they've got fiberglass insulation. That they try, you can tell they try to do a good job, but what happens is you get rafters in the way and, and blocking and electrical wires and plumbing, and there's little gaps here and there. And the cellulose will just kind of fall in around there. Another thing, while, I, while I'm thinking about that, something that I, the electrician that I work with a lot, what he's been doing to help make it easier to insulate with fiberglass, when he, does elect, when he runs his electrical wires, he doesn't run them right on top of the ceiling joists. He'll run them up higher. He'll run them up 18, 20 inches. And the guys running all their pipes for the um, uh, vent lines for their plumbing, they'll keep them up also. So now when, when you're insulating, you've got less obstacles to fit that insulation around. Um, just like on this wall over here. I'm going to put a piece of fiberglass insulation in there now. Now see this wire? That's in the way. That's making it more difficult for me to do a good job insulating. So why can't that wire be way down there? Or why can't by every switch they just drill, or every outlet, they drill down and they run a wire through, through the basement? Well, they, because the electrician doesn't want to do it. It costs too much money. Um, so I was asking Rick Arnold about it, uh, because he does a lot of this kind of work too. And what he has seen done is before they hang the drywall, or before they build this wall, I mean, they'll have a pile of two by fours and they'll take like a chainsaw and cut a groove right in the bottom of each stud. Take a kerf right out of it. Then electrical wires just get fed through there. So they're all down where it's easy to insulate around. Because as soon as I insulate around this wire, you know, that's the easy way to do it, to do it. But I didn't separate the insulation around this, around this wire. So I've actually got to split this. And you know, that's not easy to do. And it's very little fun. Look at, look at the lousy job I'm doing. It's hard to do right, isn't it? So there you go. We're trying to create an airtight cavity so our fiberglass insulation performs better. A lot of times, I will use drywall adhesive, and I'm using drywall adhesive anyways, and that typically is just run down each stud, just where our fasteners are going to be. But instead of running it just down each stud, we want to make that continuous. So the um, drywall adhesive, in this case the uh, sealant, we want that actually right along that top plate on this wall, right down this stud, one continuous, pretty generous bead. You don't want to um, skip because then it's not going to make contact with the drywall and you're going to have a gap. And then all the way up, this is, this is going to be our outside stud here. Well, I pity the guy has got to take this apart in a little while. Probably me. So now when I hang my drywall, it's going to be airtight because it's sealed all the way around. It's like I planned ahead, it's actually going to fit. Tony, you've been my helper all day. There's no sense in stopping now, right? Now, we don't want to slide it up the wall because we'll, we'll ruin our caulking, plus you're going to get it all over yourself. So let's try to go right straight up and then, and then we'll just place it right in the wall. I'm good here.
so that's the way it's going to be. We're going to hang the drywall all the way around. All the way around the drywall, there's a bead of sealant that's sealing it and creating a nice continuous air barrier. I don't have a ceiling on this wall. So I, we need to address the situation if there was a ceiling there because when I attached this piece to the wall, I was able to seal right along that plate. But what about this ceiling here where there is no place to place a bead of ad adhesive or caulking? What I like to do is I'll hang that ceiling, hang the ceiling first, and then walk around the room and place a bead of foam right in that gap. After the ceiling is, before I hang the walls, put a bead of foam right in that gap, then hang my walls right up to it quickly. That will create a nice seal. The alternative would be to do it from top later. On interior partition walls, you can get up there and do it, but along this outside edge, you can't. If I hang this bottom sheet over here, I'll show you. something else you can do. Because quite often there still ends up being a gap along the bottom and you're never quite sure if you've done a perfect job with the uh, caulking along there. So what I'm going to suggest doing, I and mean, this is what I did, I mean this is what I do for customers because doesn't take a lot of time, and if I'm offering them airtight drywall, I want to make sure that I'm doing a really good job. Usually, there's less of a gap along the floor because I have a ceiling that I'm butting up against. So it's usually about a half inch gap along that floor. I get my spray foam out and I fill that gap and I trim it off later. There again, it seems like a little bit of overkill, but it's just one more precaution because this is going to make an excellent air barrier.